always have to play with that each week. Hi, friends. It's time again for Snapshot Sacramento this week at the theater. It is June 20th, 2023. Wow, we're moving right on through this month. Hey, tomorrow is solstice. Happy solstice. Yes. If you have any, any energies you want to get out there, tomorrow will be our longest day of the year. Woohoo! Uh, official kickoff to summer. So it'll be a downhill run to September 21st, which will be our next, you know, change, our vernal equinox. So here it comes, folks. It's summertime. And from what the weather says, we're going to have record lows. So it's supposed to be like 77 tomorrow, which I'll take it for the first day of summer, considering how warm it was last year out here. Um, yeah. So happy day before first day of summer's eve and, and all of that stuff. We are really excited tonight because we get to share a community conversation with you this evening. We've got information here on a great show that is playing over at, um, oh, we'll see, that helps so much to turn the light on. Amazing. You have to remember all your technology. Um, a great show that is playing right now at Big Idea Theater. So we're going to be talking with three of the five Bettys from a show called Collective Rage at the end of this broadcast. So let's get into what's going on this week at the theater, uh, brought to you by, as I said, the Sacramento Area Regional Theater Alliance. We are Sarda. You can contact us at sarda.com. You can visit our website. We've got some exciting updates there. You can leave things on our Facebook page, the Sacramento Area Regional Theater Alliance Facebook page. If you have a posting that you want to get out there, something that maybe you forgot to mail to us that you want to get out there really quickly, put it up there so we can see it. And um, we'll talk about it on the stream. We'll get that information out there for you uh, because that's what we do. We want everybody to know about the amazing things that are going on in your neck of the woods with theater. So we actually do have a special event announcement right now. Uh, this is going to be a one night only uh, in July. So if you have time in July to go and see this, and I'm going to make time because I think this is going to be kind of amazing. It's going to be at the Nevada Theater and uh, Sierra Stages is hosting this event. It's called Cthulhu the Musical. I kid you not. I am so excited about this. I was so frustrated because I really, you know, was having technical issues trying to get the photo that they sent to go into my slideshow. I'm going to work on that because I'm going to bring this back and we're going to talk about it again until it's time for this show because I think we all need to support this. These are the Puppeteers for Fears from Oregon. They are a dedicated puppet musical horror troupe. I love everything about that. That just sounds so amazing right now. And so this is their original show called Cthulhu the Musical. And it's going to be one night only. It's going to be a musical monster extravaganza. And anything that throws extravaganza at the end of it, yes, please. Let's let's do all of that stuff. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Doors at 7, Show at 7.30, Nevada Theater. Tickets are $25, and I, I think that's pretty good, quite personally, uh, to have a $25 ticket for something that sounds like it's going to be really, really epic. So, Puppeteers for Fears are doing Cthulhu, the musical, next month on the 18th of July. I, I think you need to see it. Anything that's listed as music madness and so, so many tentacles has got to be good, all right? Um, wow, oops, don't go that way, <laughs> go this way. Uh, so that's it for our special announcements. I know that one's out there ways, but that's okay. We have a month to get ready for that one. Right now, you need to check your headshots and resumes because we're going to talk about some auditions. Davis Musical Theater Company is holding auditions for its uh, production called Something Rotten. They're going to be on Sunday, June 25th or Monday, June 26th. So coming up next week, Coming up next week. 
Sunday, June 25th at 7.30, Monday, June 26th at 7.30, and callbacks are going to be on Tuesday. This is a show that's going to open in September, so it's for a fall production. Um, I love the fact that they're taking the time to get this together now. I just recently went to see a production of this, and it's a funny, funny show. So if you got some musical chops and some comedy chops, you would probably love to audition for this. Something Rotten at Davis Musical Theater Company. DMTC puts on some fun shows. Now, for now playing, I know that wasn't very many auditions. We didn't have a lot this time. Um, most people have their things running for the summer already, so I've got a lot of things in now playing, uh, which we'll start with this one because this is the one we're going to have the community conversation a little later on about. This is called Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys. It's written by Jen Silverman, and it opened on June 9th, but it is playing through July 1st. So you still have time this weekend and the following weekend to get your tickets to go and see this. I personally have tickets on Friday night. You should go. You should come. You should say hi. We should see this show together. It should be amazing. Um, they shared this other picture because they and it actually has this really long title that's written in the front of Big Idea Theaters. It says... A play in five Bettys. In essence, a queer and occasionally hazardous exploration. Do you remember when you were in middle school and you read about Shackleton and how he explored the Antarctic? If you don't know who that is, it was a pretty disastrous kind of thing. Um, well, imagine the Antarctic as a pussy and that, that it, it's sort of like that. This is actually the whole title of the show, Collective Rage, A Play in Five Bettys and that whole line up there. Uh, we're going to talk with three of those five Bettys uh, at the end of this during our, our uh, community conversation, and it should be great fun. So I can't wait to share that with you. Um, yeah, get your tickets and go see Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys. If we can't convince you of that after our, our community conversation today, I don't know what I don't know what else we could tell you. It's closing this weekend, so you still have one more weekend to get over to Sutter Street Theater to the Kit Kat Club and see Cabaret. Um, this this is one of those shows that really doesn't need a lot of introduction because everybody should know about Cabaret. If you are a theater person and you don't know what Cabaret is, you and I need to have a conversation because something's deeply missing in your theater acumen. We're going to take back your theater nerd card. Okay? So... Cabaret closes this weekend, so you better get your tickets if you want to see it. Another one that's closing this weekend is You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. This is just one of those wonderful kind of feel-good shows that you can go and see. Also playing at Sutter Street Theater. Also closes this weekend, um, Saturdays and Sundays at 1 o'clock. So this coming Sunday is going to be its last show. So get your tickets if you want to see You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Wrapping up this at the end of this month, so it's still got a, another week to play, is called Gold Can't Love You Back. It's an immersive musical experience uh, up at the House of Fates and Stonehouse Productions is presenting this. Uh, they're encouraging Western attire, so they want you to dress up and come and see this show. Um, it should be great. Uh, they're running this thing through the month of June, so get your tickets for this cool experience called gold can't love you back so true money can't buy you everything and gold can't love you back also closing this weekend so if you haven't gotten in there to see it you need to get in there and see it i went it was wonderful uh this is a show called by the way meet vera stark and it's playing over at celebration arts it's by lynn notage and it was directed by nicole lemon and it is a great great show so get your tickets to go see by the way, meet Vera Stark. If you don't do it this weekend, you're going to miss it. Now it's playing at the Woodland Opera House. It also closes this weekend. So if you haven't gotten tickets, haven't had a chance to go and see The Lightning Thief, the Percy Jackson musical, this will be your final weekend to have an opportunity to see this amazing musical also. Several different places have done this, and I love the fact that Woodland Opera House is putting it up because they always do great musicals out there. But this is your final weekend for The Lightning Thief, the Percy Jackson musical. 
You've still got some time, however, for this one. This one's up at Volcano Theater Company. They're presenting Beowulf and the Bard. It's playing right now, and it will be playing through July 8th. So if you're looking something for something to do for your 4th of July weekend, this would be a great thing for you to do. Go see Beowulf and the Bard. Take a little trip up the hill to Volcano. Volcano is such a pretty place, and their theaters are lovely. Both of their theaters are lovely. So you would enjoy going to see this. Another one that's happening, Main Street Theater Works, is showing The Quest for Don Quixote. This was a play by Mark Brown, and it's on running through July 15th. It just opened last weekend. It's going to run through July 15th. This is at the Kennedy Mine Amphitheater up in Jackson. So the gates open for the amphitheater at 6.30 and they always have a time where you can go get drinks and snacks and all that kind of stuff before you get settled in your seats to see the 8 o'clock show. So you can get tickets at the gate or you can buy them ahead of time. MainStreetTheaterWorks.org Get your tickets for the quest for Don Quixote. Now, we've got a fair few things coming soon, too, which is kind of exciting because there's a lot coming down the pike that's going to be very exciting to see. Let's check it out. Mark Heckman is presenting Waiting for Godot. This is playing at the Three Penny Playhouse. Um, they've got some uh, tickets available, and it's produced by former students of Ed Claudio. So you can go to Eventbrite at, and put in Waiting for Godot and check it out. Um, this is a Samuel Beckett classic about the absurdity of existence. So if you want to see this great show, go to the website for Three Penny Playhouse, get your tickets, contact them if you have any questions. Also coming up a little later on this summer to Main Street Theater Works, this one will open in August and run through September 2nd. A red plaid shirt by Michael Wilmot. Does his shirt look make me look retired? This should be a wonderful, funny thing. And it's also playing at the Kennedy Mine Amphitheater up in Jackson. So again, you can get there early, get some drinks and things, get settled in your seats, and get ready for an evening of comedy with a red plaid shirt. This one is an interesting one. One of these that's based on a true story, and we've brought you a few of those. Um, this one is called Predictor. It's by Jennifer Blackmer and it's directed by Imani Mitchell. This is its West Coast premiere. It's opening on June 21st, which happens to be tomorrow, right? And it will play through July 23rd. This is based on true events. It's the story of a woman who in 1967 became the inventor of the first home pregnancy test. Think about how some of these things that we so mm, casually walk into a, a drugstore and pick up now have actually changed the course of women's health and women's health care over our lifetimes. Predictor, June 21st through July 23rd at Capitol Stage. The McLaughlin Theatre Company is bringing its production of Matilda, the musical, starting on July 28th and running through August 6th. They've got a lot of productions coming and you can get your tickets at McLaughlinStudios.com. This, the theater is on Switzer Road in Loomis, California. So McLaughlin Theater Company is presenting Matilda, the musical. So glad to have these guys back. It's been a long time since we've been able to enjoy the Sacramento Shakespeare Festival. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, this was always Shakespeare in the Park. It was put on typically by, you know, the folks at Sacramento City College, which it still is. But it was usually performed over in the amphitheater in William Land Park. So you got to take your picnic and your lawn chairs and, and your, you know, bring a bottle of wine. You're sitting out in the park just chilling to watch an evening of Shakespeare. And it was beautiful at the amphitheater over there. Well, they're doing it inside at the Art Court Theater uh, now. And this will be their first time back. Um since the pandemic you know we've got so much to thank that pandemic for we missed a number of things during that time and you know okay 
we're back again. We're going to make this all work. So Macbeth will be opening July 7th and play through the 23rd. They are having... Uh, their shows will start at 7.30. I love the fact that so many theaters are starting just that half hour earlier makes it seem like it's it's less of a late evening for folks. So it, performances are going to be at 7.30 p.m. And they've got a few 2 o'clock matinees on their Sundays too. So check their schedule for that. In-person performing arts center at the Art Court Theater at Sacramento City College. The Shakespeare Sacramento Shakespeare Festival is presenting Macbeth or the Scottish play if you want to be superstitious about it. You're just not supposed to say it in the theater. I can say it here. I'm not in a theater. Stage Right Productions is presenting its uh, performance of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. You've all read that one when you were in school and it's still a great, great story. This one will open at the end of this month, June 30th, and play through July 8th. And you can get your tickets. I mean, their ticket prices are great. They're $18 for just the general ticket. Most of the time, tickets are $20 to $25. So this is a great deal. Stage Right Productions has been very good about keeping it affordable. So their seniors, Sarta, and student tickets are $16. And again, we thank them for that. So many of our member theaters have continued to offer our patrons who are SARTA members a member's price. And if you want to be a SARTA member, this is a great time for you to, you know, open a new tab if you're on your computer and go over to our website and go to, you know, how, to, how the page where you can sign up to do that. And you can get an annual membership. We'll send you a membership card. And a lovely, lovely thank you letter and a Sarta pen. We we got we got stuff. We'll send you we'll send you swag, so that when you have these theaters that offer the Sarta discount, you can show them your card. See, I'm a card carrying Sarta person, um, and they will give you the Sarta discount, which gets you a ticket for sixteen dollars. That makes it really, really affordable. I mean, that's the same price as a regular night of movie going. And, you know, their popcorn, their the concessions aren't usually nearly as expensive as that. So theater nerds, theater nerds, get your tickets to see Little Women at with Stage Right Productions coming up soon at the end of the month. Also coming up at the end of the month, well, within a few more days, actually, this opens on the 23rd. So a few more days and you can see Newsies Jr. Newsies Jr. is being produced by the Roseville Theater Arts Academy. So this is our young people's productions. So it's going to open on the 23rd and play through the 25th. Newsies is a very high energy show with lots of great music, amazing dancing. So, you know, you're going to love this. So Newsies Jr., also coming, Sierra Stages is going to have its production of Guys and Dolls, which will open on July 13th at the Nevada Theater. It should be wonderful. It, you've seen this movie probably. It's one of the great classics. Lots of wonderful songs, great dancing. So this is, again, opening on July 13th and playing through August 5th at the Nevada Theater. Production is by Sierra Stages. Volcano Theater Company is bringing you another great show starting in August and running through September 9th. They will be uh, show, having their production called Silent Sky. And this is based on a true story again of a woman astronomer who, you know, it was around the 1900s when she was working, which was a very hard time for women to be in science of any type, let alone be college people and things like that. Uh, and her discoveries have had profound and lasting impacts on the field of astronomy. So if you're curious about this, you can go see this show in their amazingly big, very cool amphitheater theater. They have a theater that's under the stars. It's this big open air space with these lovely tall pine trees around it. Uh, you're, you know, it's beautiful for a summer evening. Take your chairs, your picnic, your, your bottle of wine, and go see this production, Silent Sky, under the stars. It'll be great. September, August 11th through September 9th. They always let us know that tickets are available right now. So if you want tickets to these shows, go ahead and buy them so that you can have that in your calendar. Following up Silent Sky, 
Volcano Theater Company is going to be doing Noel Coward's play called Blythe Spirit. A little something, something scary to ease us into the October uh, festivities of that year. This one uh, will open on September 15th and it'll close on October 15th. They're celebrating 50 seasons of theater of a volcano theater company. I think that's amazing. And that's just another reason you should go up there and support volcano theater company. Let them know that Sarda sent you, you know, because I think they do have the Sarda discount too. So tickets are available right now if you want to go see Blythe Spirit by Noel Coward. Well, that's all the things we've got playing right now. Let me run through our season schedules because we do have a few more things. And if you are a forward planner, like so many folks I know out there are, you may want to be looking at this and going, okay, what am I going to do for fall? I've got people coming in at this time. I need something I can take them to that'll be absolutely wonderful and fun for them to do. Um, you know, take them to the theater. So let's see what's playing. Freefall Stage still has a few things coming up in their season that they're looking at, so you can go see While the Lights Were Out. That's playing right now. It's opening tomorrow as we as we are talking about it, and we'll play through the 30th. Uh, Help Me will be coming up, Pride and Prejudice, and Amelia Earhart. So that'll wrap up the year for them because Amelia Earhart's going to be their November show. But look, they've got four remaining shows in the 2023 season for Free Fall Stage. So you can go to their website and see what else they've got as offerings for shows that are coming up. Davis Musical Theater Company, you just heard us talk about uh, Something Rotten that's coming up pretty soon. They've got the auditions going for that, but they're also going to be doing Oklahoma and Susicle, the musical, Fiddler on the Roof, Into the Woods, and The Little Mermaid. So there's something for every audience in this uh, selection by Davis Musical Theater Company. And usually if you can go to a theater company and you want to buy a season tickets or a package of season tickets, you can get some pretty sweet discounts that way. And it makes the theater know that they've got people who are coming to be a part of their audiences on a regular basis. So look for those season tickets deals. Those are always great to have. Woodland Opera House is giving us a look at their 2023-2024 season leading all the way into next year. They're going to have quite a few things going on like Spongebob the Musical, The Addams Family, which is always a fun one. When is that playing? Yep, October 6th through the 29th. So that's going to be their October uh, show, The Addams Family. They've got School of Rock happening. They've got a comedy to be announced. They were very mysterious when they came and did the community conversation a few weeks back that they couldn't tell us what the comedy was going to be yet, but there would be more news to come. So we said, okay, we'll wait. We'd love to find out what you're doing. Then they're going to do Descendants, the musical. They're going to follow that up with Damn Yankees, which is a wonderful classic um, musical uh, extravaganza. Yes, it is. And then finally, Peter and the Star Catcher. For all you Peter Pan fans out there, this is a fun show to see. So that's Woodland Opera House. Again, I know they have season passes. You may want to get some of those so that you can just already have your tickets to these amazing shows that are coming up. All right, folks, I promised you a community conversation and I, I, I want to keep my promise. We're going to talk about Collective Rage, a play in Five Bettys, and um, it should be great fun. I will um, share with you the interview that I recorded the other day with three of the Five Bettys. Couldn't get all the Bettys in the same room, but that's okay. You're just going to have to get your tickets and go to the show so you can see the rest of the Bettys, all right? So hang with me a second. I'll be right back with five, three of the Five Bettys. Hi, thank you for joining us for another community conversation. This is brought to you by the Sacramento Area Regional Theater Alliance. We are SARTA. And tonight I have the distinct pleasure of having three of five Bettys 
with me this evening to talk about a production that's showing right now at Big Idea Theater called Collective Rage, a play in Five Bettys. It's by Jen Silverman. It opened on June 9th and it's playing through July 1st, so you'll have plenty of time to see it. And once you hear from these Bettys that are here to talk about it tonight, I'm sure you'll be wanting to get your tickets. So let's start with Betty Sunny and talk to you first and say welcome to the to the program. Um, tell me which Betty you are and what brought you into theater. Uh, thanks for having us, Iris. I am Sunny. I play Betty Four. Um, what brought me into theater in general? Yeah. Or, okay. Let's start uh, there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I did my first play when I was probably in seventh or eighth grade, and I just kept doing it because it's really fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cathartic, you know, it's better than therapy and it's cheaper. So, absolutely, absolutely. All <laughs> right. So, that's Betty number four. She's sunny. Let's go to, let's see, let's talk to Lindsay next. Lindsay, which Betty are you, and what got you into theater? Thank you so much for having us. Um, I am Betty One. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what brought me into theater, I don't know. I'm not sure. Love of uh, people and the. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've been doing it for a little while, but I didn't actually study it until I was a little bit older. And I'm just really grateful to be a part of this cast. Everybody's been really wonderful. Marvelous, marvelous. And then we have the lovely Kate over here. Kate, what Betty are you? Uh, I am uh, Betty Five, um, or other Betty with the truck Betty. Um, <laughs> uh, what got me into theater? I've, I've always always been a theater kid did kids uh, theater in you know elementary school and stuff like that um but i never considered it something i could do in adulthood until i went to like one of those like not a career fair but where all the departments are on the quad in college and recruiting their people and i was like wait a minute that's a thing i could do i can i can do theater um and i never looked back so here we are right on good yeah. Good. So these are our Bettys for the evening, and they're going to share a little bit, I hope, with us about the show Collective Rage. I mean, you know, already sounds kind of angry. I hope it's not a whole thing on anger, but maybe it is, and maybe that's cathartic. So without giving the whole thing away, who'd like to tell us a little bit about Collective Rage? And why are these five Bettys so angry? Um, I think... Uh... I think I think every female bodied individual has some anger, some rage that we aren't necessarily encouraged to express. Um, and so I think it's something that's going to be relatable for a lot of people, especially uh, female bodied individuals. Um, it is a comedy. It is a comedy, ultimately, but the characters are very, I mean, they're kind of hyperhuman. Um, and I think there's going to be someone, some character that everybody can relate to, at least a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hyperhuman. I love, I love that concept because it brings up images. Uh, talk to me, uh, Lindsay, about your hyperhuman Betty as much as you can without, again, don't give the whole thing away, but you know. <laughs> I think um, my, my character's anger is internal and externally, uh, <laughs> like the news, for example, mm. uh, you know, things in the news not always being happy and uh, that taking a toll on you know, some people's realities and, and taking a toll on uh, people's mental health. Mm. Yeah, mm. the news. 
sometimes we don't need to look at the news because it's just yeah the anger <laughs> i can get the rage behind that one absolutely and and kate as much as you can share what 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 type of rage issues is your betty having <laughs> for all of this yeah um betty <laughs> I think Betty Five has a lot of internal rage. Um, there's there's some backstory about a trip to rehab, and there's kind of a, a general, um, a kind of in an impersonal nature to her relationships. Um, she's very uh, a low key womanizer, you know. Very, uh, it is what it is. I do my own thing. Um, uh, keeps people at an arm's length um, until she doesn't. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of personal stuff that, that Betty Five is kind of grappling with um, and has to work through in order to progress during the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you could share a little bit about who's directing and and when you first read this piece what drew you into it what made you want to audition for something that sounds like it's really really powerful yeah um i mean when i first when i first read the character descriptions i was like gender queer and works on trucks that's hello that's me i'm here that's i i'm gonna show what um but and then I read the, the script and I was like, holy shit, um, these people are, they're so relatable. They're all so different and, and they're just kind of colliding in this space, but they're all so relatable. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's just developed into this incredibly human piece. Um, our director is Lily Tanner. Um, Tanner, is that her last name? Sorry. Yeah. Cool. Um, and she uh, she has taken a lot of care to do this like character exploration with us and, and to really dive into those headspaces. Um, and I think it's been tremendously helpful. Excellent. I, I saw you nodding over there, Lindsay, when she was saying that. Is that that what kind of what you felt too? Did you have a particular Betty in mind when you auditioned? Me? Yeah. Or did you just want to be a part of this? momentous thing that was going to happen yes i think that there's not a ton of queer theater and i auditioned for both five and one and they're very different humans and uh, i'm really grateful because uh it's made me dig into myself because there are things that are not who I want to be or who I truly am. And to express those authentically is, uh, you know, it's challenging. It's, it's challenging to say some of the things that I have to say. And um, mm -hmm. I, yes, Lily uh, helped help us build like relationships with each other and you know what it what it what each character looks like and feels like and there there was a lot of like internal work that went into it and i i appreciate it and i feel like it brought us closer together as a cast too you know? yeah beauty of a good director too um how about you sunny was there a specific one that you auditioned for or did you just want to be a part of this whole play experience um, yeah, so I auditioned for Betty Five and Betty Two, and then got called back for Betty Four. Um, and Betty Four is a really hard character because she's very two dimensional compared to the other ones in the in the text in the script. Um, so the way that I feel like Lily really approached this project like psychologically. So we had to do a lot of like, a lot, a lot of character work, <laughs> a lot of character work. Um, <clears throat> but it's been such a great process and it's been a safe process as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's a, it's a fully queer cast, which 
is awesome. And that's the, this is the first time I've ever been a part of a fully queer project. Um, and it's been this environment where it's like safe to make mistakes and safe to like explore things and then find out what works and what doesn't, you know, for the most part. And I think, um, it's just been fantastic, but yeah, I wasn't expecting Betty for I get it now, but at the time I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's wonderful that this particular play, and I, I'm sure it was probably intentional, came out for Pride Month um, to be a part of all of the celebrations that are going on. So hopefully we'll get some more word out about this so we can get people in to see this amazing show. Queer theater is not something that you get to see a lot of anyway. Um, and I'm I'm hoping that there are going to be more people writing for this audience that everybody, you know, intentionally tries to ignore. Most of the time, you know, I mean, let's face it, that's that's just not. And in our political atmosphere, I think it's extremely important to be able to highlight what's going on and, and create those safe spaces to just have these conversations and see these kinds of things and understand the humanity of everyone, queer, straight, whatever, wherever on your alphabet you land, you're okay. And it's okay to be that here. Um, so yes, creating those, those spaces, having that kind of work done is amazing. Um, is Jen Silverman the actual playwright? What, what do we know about this individual? Are they part of the queer community or do they do they have they written more plays like this? If if you've explored any of that, I'm just I'm being curious now. If you know. Um, I, I believe they're part of the community. Um, okay. I don't know much about the scope of their work. Okay. All right. The way it's written, it sounds like Jen is at least intimate with the community, you know, like knows, you know, Jen knows the ins and outs, mm. you know, at least. Um, but I can't say for sure. Sure, sure. Um, I haven't really, I haven't Googled her yet. <laughs> I, I will, I will be Googling that before I, before we share this with, with the public so I can give everybody a little more background when we, when we actually share the, your, um, your interviews. It's 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 interesting to see who these playwrights are, what these what these imaginative and and pointed pieces of works are that are coming out um, of any community of you know especially the underrepresented communities in our in our society would be and and how important it is to have them out there and and playing so. You are playing for until July 1st, and that'll be the closing time for that. I know you're doing Thursday through Saturday nights. Is that an eight o'clock show? Yes. Eight o'clock show. Okay. Do you have a matinee in there for the people who need to go to bed early? Yes. This okay. coming Sunday at 2 p.m. Sunday at 2, you'll have a matinee. Okay. So so all of you folks who need to go to bed early, they do have a two o'clock matinee, so you don't have to stay out too late. Um, Big Idea Theater is always doing something wonderful and innovative in their work. Um, what's going to be next for you all after July 1st when Betty's close? Do you have plans yet or looking for the next great show to do? Yeah, I don't know yet. I don't um, know yet. Okay. I don't know yet. All right. It kind of depends what I find, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This one, do you think that this would be something that would be worth taking and producing in other places? I mean, it's great that I, you're doing it a big idea, but I, I would I would think that this would be one that could be done again. Yes, please. Uh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> okay. Like, Entire cast wants that to happen. <laughs> oh, ec okay. All right. Well, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we have wonderful opportunities that present themselves and we'll have to see if we can get this out there again. So. Everyone, if you haven't got your plans for this weekend or even the weekend after, because you still got two weekends, please get your tickets for Big Idea Theater's production of Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys. It's playing through July 1st, Big Idea Theater. You've got three of the Bettys here. 
They just told you how wonderful it is. Um, just some closing remarks, you guys. Is there any one particular point in the play that you want to tell us about that is like your favorite piece? I know, favorite piece, favorite line maybe, favorite look you get to give someone on stage. <laughs> Um, I mean, personally, my favorite line in the show comes from Betty Three uh, when she says something to the effect of acting is having a nervous breakdown on stage at specific times. <laughs> <laughs> that, that continues to kill me every night, you know, even though we've heard it, you know, dozens of times. It's still <laughs> That's a that, good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> How about you, Lindsay? Anything else you'd like to share? I think uh, for my character specifically is like transformation, you know, growth. Okay. Okay. That's always something that, yeah, when we see a character transform in front of us during a, a theater production, it I, I know for me, it's like you took me along that journey with you and thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that piece of you. Um, any last thoughts on this, Sunny? What do you think? What's um, your favorite bit? You know, I I just really love that throughout the whole thing. Like my character like really finds her voice at the end. And I feel like she spends the whole time like struggling to be heard. Mm. And, and she's like, you know what? I'm just gonna freaking say it. And then does. And I think it's a really cool moment. Um, but if you're easily offended, this probably isn't the show for you. <laughs> Just heads up. Okay, so this is definitely for over 18. And if you're if you're having any struggles with, you know, language or something or situ adult situations. Language situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. <laughs> this might not be the show for you. Yeah. Or you I may mean, want to consider not bringing your grandma. I don't know. <laughs> you know depends like, on your grandma. Depends on your grandma. <laughs> That's right. Depends on your grandma. We will not denigrate grandmas here. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming in and doing this. We're going to we're going to share this a few different times so we can hopefully get you some folks in there in the next couple of weeks. Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys right now at Big Idea Theater. You guys need to go. And thank you all for joining me for this community conversation. We'll see you again with some other great community members out here who want to come and tell you about the fantastic things they're doing at the theater. Wait, bye. We'll see ya. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Those guys were so much fun. Oh my gosh. I thoroughly enjoyed chatting with them. I am totally looking forward to going to see the show on Friday night. Did I mention I'm going on Friday night? I'm going. I'm going. Why? Because it looks like a cool show and I'm a big old theater nerd. Um, so and and i think everybody needs to see this uh, a queer theater is something that we need to get out there and promote more i mean queer people have been a part of theater ever since theater has been a part of human existence and yet they have been silenced so having their voices clearly heard is something that needs to occur and i am so happy that big idea theater has chosen to honor that by putting on Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys. So get your tickets, go to the theater, come see it this weekend. Come hang out with me, you know, there will be a few of us coming to this. As I always tell you, please let us know what's going on at your theater, what your productions are, what your company's doing, what your audition needs are. If you need volunteers, we'll ask people for anything. We're, we're kind of shameless panderers. Please help. We will ask everybody to please help you. Please help them. Help these poor wafy theaters because it's been a hard row out there. We're still only a year past pandemic. And people are just now maybe getting to the point where they're feeling comfortable to come back out again. So community theater particularly needs you. We're hearing all the time about theaters that are closing down because they just don't have the funds to keep the space open. And every time that happens, that's a loss to the arts community in your area, in our area, in our community. We can't 
really support that. Without arts, humans atrophy. I'm sorry, we do. We need the arts. We need music. We need theater. We need, we need all of it. We need painting and ceramics and, and, and every art medium, poetry, uh, spoken word things. It just, all of it needs to be there so that we can realize the fullness of our human experience in other ways than just, you know, dredging our world, trying to try and stay alive. This is the kind of thing that makes you going to work each week worth it because then you can look forward to going to some really fine entertainment in your local community on the weekend so let us publicize what's going on help us get some people into these theaters if you are out there and you're just hanging out going well what do i do for the weekend going to the theater could be a great thing please help support community theater you community theaters let us publicize your programs and tell everybody what we're doing let me tell you a few things. I got to tell you, I, I don't blow Sardis horn hard enough sometimes at these things. And I really, really should because we've got a lot of things coming down the pike too. Um, I think I shared before that we have a scholarship program and it is in full swing right now because we are funding scholarships for young people to go to camps and workshops and all kinds of things like that. So far this year, Sarda has given away, where's my numbers? There it is. $1,400 in scholarships. That's $1,400 in scholarships. So when you ask what, what what does the money go for? What does your membership money go to? What do, what do your donations go to? This is what it goes to. When we did big day of giving to try and raise money, this is what it goes to. These are the kinds of things that we're funding. We're helping, actively helping send young people to workshops and camps and, and theater programs for the summer. And we've got at least two more scholarships that we're funding that we we voted on last night so we're going to be giving away even more money but if we give it away we have to put it back so i'm going to ask now that if you haven't ever considered it please make a donation to sarda and help us do this work that we're doing we are running this this stream on a weekly basis trying to help get people's information out there tell people what the shows are that are coming up what the auditions are helping these community theaters uh, we are planning a cabaret for november we had one about a month and a half ago and it was a rousing success we're going to do it again we're having a fundraiser coming up in july it's going to be a paint night paint and 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 eats and drinks and silent auction it should be great fun again it's going to be a specific fundraiser particularly for the scholarship program um and we're excited to 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 do that we're going to have another <clears throat> excuse me tonight starring we i talked to you about that when we just did god of carnage on the 11th over at big idea theater we're doing another one in august at another theater we are not sure if we're going to be at california stage or at celebration arts so i'll be back to you with information on that but we've got that coming up so we've got something for july and august we've got a thing for november and we're working on something for october we may actually have another cabaret that's coming for october also um which will be clearly holiday themed for all of our October, you know, Halloween files, which I'm one of them too. Um, so stay tuned for all of that. We've got some special workshops that we're going to be doing and the workshops are going to be sh in the form of almost, um, YouTube videos that we're going to record, like things like how to send a press release and how to, how to, um, we're going to talk about how to get butts and seats for our, our productions. We've got these wonderful productions that are going on. And do you know, I actually went to a theater production. Okay, this is sad, you guys. I went to a theater production. I bought two tickets that night. I invited a friend of mine to go with me. And he and I were the only ones in the theater. Something's wrong with that picture. That should never happen. We need to... And it was a good show. You know, come on. I know that, you know, you could go out and see some of this community theater. So please, please, please consider supporting our community theaters that are out there. Uh, Big Idea is one of them that's doing, you know, Collective Rage, a play in Five Betties. 
uh, there's so many things going on. I come and tell you about it each week. So go to the theater, please. If you have not done so, and you're here sitting with me on Twitch, there's a little heart button down there. Please tap it and follow us. And then each time I do one of these Twitch shows, you'll get a little notification on your phone that says, hey, Sarda's about to go on and tell you something or do a thing come and join them and then you can come and hang out with us and find out what's going on this week at the theater follow us on facebook at sarda theaters um and you the one you want to post on is the sacramento area regional theater alliance page okay so you can share with us some of the things that are going on uh at your theater in your world and i say this to you each week as I always tell you, I hope you'll take me up on it. I'm, I just told you I'm going to be out again on Friday night. So, theater nerds, where are my nerds at? Where are my nerds at? Theater nerds, come and join me, and I hope I will see you at the theater. All right, guys, have a good rest of your week. <laughs>